Today, we're making something a little outrageous. We're making a raspberry cheesecake mead. Let's get started. So, total disclaimer, I'm a sucker for crazy meads and combinations, but I did not come up with this one. This one came from Larry, who's a prominent member of my Discord. Larry is the current Discord mead leader, and he decided, with the help of the rest of our Discord community, to make a raspberry cheesecake mead. Larry got together with the members of the Discord to dream up a mead combination, and they came up with this wild mead recipe. And I can't wait to show you the results. Let's talk about the creation of this mead. First of all, it uses a lot of raspberries and some weird combination of ingredients to achieve the cheesecake side. So here is the recipe. You can see it on screen. This is for about a one and a half uh, volume recipe that comes down to maybe about a gallon after sediment. We have four pounds of raspberries in a brew bag, three pounds of wildflower honey, pectic enzyme to help break down those raspberries, nine grams of bentonite for clarity, water up to 1.5 gallons, three grams of Lauvin D254, and I'll have Larry explain why that yeast, 4.6 grams of GoFirm, five grams of Firm 8 and we did a staggered nutrient schedule. So you're already going, oh my gosh, that's a lot of stuff. There's more. After stabilizing this brew, once it's done with primary fermentation, you're gonna add graham crackers, two cinnamon sticks, a vanilla bean, two ounces of cream cheese powder, two ounces of lactose, six ounces of brown sugar, and six ounces of honey. We used Sparkaloid to clear this brew up and we force carbonated it in a keg. The starting gravity is estimated around 1.076. The primary should end at 1.000. And after back sweetening, you'll see it at about 1.020 to maybe 1.030. The approximate ABV with some dilution is about 8%. So let's be real, this recipe is bonkers. It's super long and honestly requires a lot of work, but this recipe is bomb. Once you've amassed your small grocery store's worth of ingredients, you're gonna sanitize all of your equipment with star sand or an equivalent brewing sanitizer. You're then gonna start mixing your ingredients. I started by getting my yeast going in some GoFirm. We then took our honey, water, and raspberries and mixed them up vigorously. Larry highly recommends a brew bag for this recipe, but I like to live on the edge. So I chunked those raspberries in and blended everything together into what looks like a saw three recreation and then pitched my yeast. My starting gravity was right on the money for what Larry said. It was 1.076. The use of pectic enzyme in this recipe should not only help it clear, hopefully, but it should also extract more juice and flavors out of the raspberries. The bentonite is also a good friend of clarity. It should help this recipe clear up at the end, but you will see that the cream cheese will really create quite the fiasco for this brew. Lastly, the Fermate O is there to help this brew ferment effectively, efficiently, and cleanly. I can't say this enough, feed your d yeast. I bet the Vikings even fed their yeast somehow. This brew took about two weeks to ferment through all of the gravity and then started to clear up once I saw that everything was looking like it was done, I went ahead and racked it into a new container. Sure enough, the gravity after the primary was 1.000. After a quick tasting, it was definitely a very raspberry heavy, very tart mead. That lack of sweetness really made it kind of tough to enjoy, but we're gonna fix that. It's now time to stabilize the brew. We're stabilizing this brew with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. You don't have to use these. If you wanna stabilize via pasteurizing, feel free to go for it. What is important here is that this brew has to be stabilized so we can back sweeten safely. This brew would suck if it wasn't back sweetened. A few days after stabilizing, we're gonna go ahead and add our post fermentation ingredients. We're now gonna add our cinnamon stick, vanilla bean, I used vanilla extract instead, sorry Larry, and graham crackers. I did use a brew bag this time because graham crackers just fall apart in water. Those sat for about two weeks, and then we pulled that bag out, and we added our lactose and cream cheese powder and brown sugar and our honey. The cream cheese powder was kind of tough. First of all, Larry had to send me some, so he sent me about eight ounces of it. I've used about four. I've now got about four more ounces for a future version of this brew, or a weird party. We took about two cups of really hot water and blended the cream cheese and lactose into that. We then added that into the brew. 
Yes, I do know that this diluted the ABV. Chill out, Reddit. The cream cheese really added some complexity to this brew. It was quite chunky, viscous, uh, creamy. Since we did all of these things at the same time, we're able to let it set for a bit longer to age. Since I added about 12 ounces of brown sugar and 12 ounces of honey, the final gravity for this brew was about 1.024. You can see all the gravity changes here. This brew then sat for a few more days and went into a keg. We force carbonated it. If you want to see a video on how to do that, it's on my channel. Listen, I'll be real with you. This brew cannot be done without a kegging operation, if you want to carbonate it at least. I think it really needs carbonation because flat, it would be kind of weird. Now that we've gone through this incredible experience, feel free to watch from the beginning if you got lost. Let's go to the tasting with the madman himself. All right, here we are with Larry, the madman who created this recipe alongside, of course, everyone in the Discord. He's the madman leader, I guess, of this <laughs> thing. Um, so, I, like you said, Larry, you haven't opened yours. I haven't opened yours specifically, but I have mine. I say we go ahead and we pour them both okay. so that they can kind of have equal time to breathe and do their thing. Ooh, colors are, are very different. Yeah, uh, I noticed that just with your pictures after primary. Uh -huh. got a lot more of the, the red yeah. out of the red. Yeah, I, I got a ton of, of that red. You got a little more burnt orange um, mm -hmm. hue. But yours is clear, for sure. I feel like they're the same carbonation level, though. Just based off of smell, you can... You know what you open. Oh, uh -huh. And ours are a little different there, too. Yeah, okay, so... What do you get off of mine compared to yours? Cream cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the it first is, thing I smell. It is yeah. very cream, cream cheesy. <laughs> I feel like I, I definitely get a lot more of, like, tart raspberry um, yeah. off yours. Yep. A little bit of, like, a... Um, like a earth, uh, uh, earthy note. Maybe it's that raspberry just popping through. What was your um, final gravity on yours? Mine was 1.024. I don't know that I checked. Oh, okay. I don't know if um, it or not. There were so many things going on in there that I, I just left it alone. Um, yeah. There's, who knows if what I wrote down was accurate. All right, well, let's get to, to tasting. And then we can kind of talk about the extra chaos of this recipe. And um, let's yeah. just see. I want to start with yours, if that's okay. all right. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, so deceiving. Nose does not have a lot of sweetness on it. It might just be the cream cheese on mine that presents a sweetness, but it is. It's definitely got the sweetness behind it. Yeah. It's really thick. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm curious what you think of mine. Um, I definitely get a lot of, of that uh, raspberry. The cream cheese to me is, um, I feel like it was a really hard flavor to obviously get in a mead. That was quite the challenge, even with cream cheese yeah. powder. Like, I don't know how, how more more particular you can get with cream cheese than the powder yeah. itself. And that's, that's the thing is like, there's a lot of cheesecake style like sour beers and stuff out there and none of them re really hit the mark for me because uh -huh. it just tastes like the fruit with some extra like lactic acid and stuff so i i really didn't want to go down that road because yeah. I, I knew where it would lead yeah this has to me um the acid is definitely very apparent that res uh raspberry acid side that's there we talked about originally in the recipe we used um or you had to use lactic acid and we did make that adjustment kind of towards the end um i i i felt like mine was tart enough i guess we'll yeah. see you know whenever we taste it but i i like yours i do think that you captured a really nice raspberry character here and there is speaking of that yeast you know we had mentioned um using the d254 you, yep. There were some notes on it that you were you were talking about that you thought would work well with this recipe. Do you remember what those were? It had mentioned some spices in particular, and I thought that would go well with the um, the breadiness, the like uh -huh. graham cracker type thing. And then I thought I had seen uh, vanilla notes too, but I don't I don't know if that's right. I it's like a hazelnut, butterscotch, something like yeah. that. Um, the, the, the thing I, I like about this is it does have a little bit of that, um, 
subtle spicy note not not heat like uh pepper no. spice to me but it has like some of those interesting uh spice characters which could be graham cracker graham cracker is also the other hard thing in all my recipes it's so hard to get graham cracker flavor to pop it's yes. just it's weird all right let's switch to mine all right and i'm curious i think it's going to be a very big change from what you just had <laughs> They're, wow, they're a lot more similar on the palate than they were mm -hmm. taste-wise, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the nose are so different. Yeah, I don't think if you, I think they're different enough to where if you put them in front of me, I could tell them apart, blindfolded, for sure. Right. But, but I think they're a lot more similar taste-wise than they were. Uh, mm -hmm. or I th yeah, I thought there was going to be a really big difference. May Based off just the nose, but like you're saying, it is definitely interesting. I get a lot more raspberry on yours for sure, mm -hmm. which is kind of which is nice. Do you get any? I mean, I think from both of ours, we're obviously trying to get the cheesecake. Do you feel like we hit the, hit the same amount of cheesecake flavor, or? I think it's a little less on yours, uh -huh. just, a, just a smidge. Um. And I was really get I really get the cheesecake on both of them towards the middle. Like yeah. you get the fruit first, and mm -hmm. then and then the cheesecake. And I think this one's got a little bit more of the the crustiness too, which is nice. Yeah, I think we we use the same ratios. I just doubled your recipe essentially. So I made a a three gallon batch. Yeah. You know, technically. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what caused all, all like all the all the differences you know there's mm -hmm. a billion different things it could be um right you may have just got fruit that had more juice in it or yeah whatever but yeah they it's it's definitely neither of them are they're not the same they're not right. the same i think the recipe itself though um I, I don't know for sure because i'm sure somebody could come through and do this in their own way i feel like it's pretty dang close to a raspberry cheesecake in a drink form. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much closer you're gonna get without it being gross. With yeah, without it being like you know, putting that cheesecake powder into the glass, yeah. you know. And you know, I've I've had beers where that do stuff like that. Mm. Um, Seems a little too chunky for me. Yeah, where they, um, I had one not too long ago. I think it was last week that was supposed to be. Uh, Reminiscent of like a pudding cup. Oh, and I, I don't know how they did it, but it it felt like you were drinking a watered down alcoholic pudding cup. Mm. Is that enjoyable? <laughs> it was. It wasn't bad. Man, I, it, I don't know. To me, that sounds kind of gross, but it's an experience. I'm sure. I do feel like it's really close, and I, I'd recommend people to try it. I know um, the recipe is a little bit daunting. To, to look at uh, I you know I made a joke at the beginning of this video I said once you go and mask your small grocery stores worth of ingredients you can get started you know and it's kind of true there's a a lot of stuff that goes into this so this is not a I would say beginner recipe <laughs> this is somebody who has quite a few underneath their belt um, yeah I would not do this as your first <laughs> no. for sure no, but it, it's still fun it there were a lot of unique challenges to using cream cheese powder that I haven't experienced using other stuff. Most things when you're brewing that are going to fall out of suspension are going to go to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I did not have that experience with cream cheese powder. It all right flowed to the top. To the top. <laughs> and no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to sink. Mm -hmm. So I, you just have to rack up underneath it. And it's, it was sketchy to try and blend in because you're like, you don't want to oxygenate, oxygenate too much. And so then you're like kind of trying to slightly stir it in. And even with hot water, like the lactose and the cream cheese, I felt like it was a little bit tough to mix it in. And then it, I don't know how much of it was lost in, um, in racking, you know, so much of that flavor could have been lost at some point, um, in the moving. So I don't know. Yeah. And I think too, the fact that we're using so many ingredients and things that do fall out of suspension, that's where some of the small differences kind of amplify. So that's how we end up with two brews that use the same recipe that 
are in no way the same color. <laughs> they're, right. No, they're, no, they're not. They're, not they're the same fairly at all. similar flavor wise. Like yeah, I, and I they smell completely different. Mm-hmm. Yes. I went back into mine a second ago. They smell completely different. It is fascinating, but it is also telling that smell obviously is important. Aroma is important, but taste is also that. That's where you're going to get a lot of your main yeah. characters. Because we've had, um, you know, in judging, there's so many times where we'll smell a mead and then you taste it and it tastes totally different from the mm. smell. It could be a wonderful aroma and you're like, this thing smells like it's going to be great and then tastes terrible or vice versa. You used uh, vanilla extract, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I, yes it is. I used beans and I wonder if that contributes to some of the some of the difference too. There is a, um, I feel like I have a, uh, let's see. Mine's a little softer profile, I would say. Yeah, but I, I mean, I do like yours too. I think they're both. I think they're both really good, and they're great representations of of a raspberry okay. cheesecake. Again, that recipe. I'm gonna make sure and put it up again so people can try. Of course, you'll have to go back and watch the process because that's yeah. where everything. You, I feel like we got the process down for sure. Yeah. I did note in this video, there's no way. I, I don't believe there's a way you could do this in a bottle carved version. Um, <laughs> So no, don't even try. Food. And I know that turns some people away from this recipe because they're like, well, I can't keg. I'm sorry, yeah. I know that's that's hard. but it's Getting more accessible. Yes. You know, they do make one-gallon kegs. You can do that. But they're all also expensive. So. Yeah. Well, Larry, you are the leader of... This is Discord Mead 5. So here's what happens now. Because of the, the power you have continues on into the future. So for the people watching the video uh, right now, during the week uh, that, this, that this is posted, uh, Larry is going to be in the Discord, which he's already in there. He's he's in there a lot, and he <laughs> helps me out big time in, in running and helping the, uh, people in that. But he's going to be in there to pick the next Discord Mead leader. So we're going to do the sixth episode of this, and you, watching right now, can be the leader of that one. There's a little bit of a... Uh, process to it you do have to go in there and we normally have you talk about your ideas or you know Larry will kind of give his ground rules for what he wants the next leader to say or do and uh, not only can you design a super crazy recipe your fun recipe but you also get some money and some things so Larry I'm gonna be uh, sending him a 50 bucks and a, a uh, man-made mead merchandise of his choice um, um, from my my t-shirt store, which I'll have a t-shirt, so sorry, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna send that to him So you too can also get that but it's been a lot of fun and it, it this series Continually um, Challenges me, but also is like so fun because last one we did was Moscow mule and mm. Man, I don't know if you tried that that recipe Larry, but it is pretty killer It's There's, on the list, but the yeah. list doesn't get shorter <laughs> Exactly so I, I hope to uh, see you in the Discord, and thank you to Larry for, for spending the time doing this and designing a recipe, and I, I know it's kind of painstaking, and um, but this is a lot of fun. And of course, shipping bottles, you know, that's, that's a whole other side of the world. <laughs> Dangerous part. But we'll see you in the Discord, and uh, cheers. Cheers.